Hello dear friends, today I come your way again, your servant Father Tony here. Allow me to mix scripture, spirituality, history, science, everything together and let us discuss what is happening in our world today. The key word here is quarantine. Many governments, many authorities, many nations are being asked to observe social distancing and to observe hygiene like washing of hands and use of sanitizers. The world is in a panic state. People are afraid. But today I come your way to let you know that as Christians, as children of God, and even as anyone who watched me today, today I want to tell you there is hope if only we can work something out of it. In the 14th century, around 1343, there was this Black Death disease that swept almost a third of Europe, and they died. And that was when the first time governments started, authorities started telling people to go into quarantine. But the word quarantine comes from the Latin word quarantino. Quarantino represents the word 40 days or 40. But it didn't start with 40. In those times around the 14th century, when the ships that were moving around that could possibly spread were given a Trentino, that is 30 days in isolation. That was when the world started in terms of modern history from the medieval time, people being isolated because disease was spreading and they needed to contain it. By that same century, many other nations moved from the Trentino, that is the 30-day isolation period, to 40, which is Quarantino. So, we have 40 days of isolation just to stop the spread of disease. So, in our time, it is not something so new. It has happened before in generations. It has happened before in history. But that is a recent. Let us go into scripture. It did not start from 30 and now moved to 40 quarantino or quarantine. But if you read with me Leviticus chapter 13, verse 54 to verse 55, it started with seven days. And I read, priests are to order a contaminated person or article to wash and isolate for seven days. And it was after the seventh day that they are washed again, re-examined before they are allowed into society. And if they found that they were not still clean, they were still isolated. So it started with seven days. Then in the medieval time, it moved to 30 days, Trentino. Then it moved to 40 days, Quarantino. And now it has moved into our English language, quarantine. And so when governments are trying to let people socially distant just to contain diseases, it has happened before. And so I come your way today to let you know that we can work and get something out of it. If the whole um, humanity were not swept out because they observed seven days in the time of the Bible, 30 days in the time of the 14th century, and 40 days in our time, then it means that if we can observe it very well as Christians, as human beings, we can get something out of it. Now, what do we do as Christians? And I'm back again. We continue. In Matthew chapter 4 from verse 2, or Luke chapter 4, from verse 2, Jesus was taken into the wilderness for a quarantino for 40 days, 40 nights of prayer and fast. And that was when he developed himself 
in our humanity and he got the courage he was able to save us as God and as man in our time fortunately for us in 2020 our quarantino has fallen at a time that most Christians are observing 40 days of prayer and fast if nothing at all I know about the Anglican Church I know about the Methodist Church the Presbyterian Church the Catholic Church there are so many churches that are observing Quarantino. Our brothers and sisters, the Muslims, observe the Trentino. And it boosts their morale. It boosts their spirituality. It rejuvenates them. It rejuvenates all of us. And we come back. So like Jesus, there was a Quarantino. Matthew chapter 4, verse 2. In Acts chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says, To these he also presented himself, I mean Jesus presented himself alive after his suffering, and by many convincing proofs appeared to them over a period of 40 days. What does it mean? In our season of 40 days of prayer and fast, if we can do it well, Jesus will prove himself God. So when I remember our president, I mean talking about Ghanaian president, told us to pray for a day and fast. I don't think he was wrong. And so in this 40-day period, especially Lenten season 2020, our quarantino will bring Jesus close to us with many proofs after his suffering. Christians may be suffering now, the whole world may be suffering now, but for us who trust in God and who do our quarantino, we will see proof of God's authority and this disease can stop. Go with me back to Genesis chapter 7, verse 17. The Bible says, Then the floods came up the earth for 40 days, quarantino, and the water increased and lifted up the ark, so the whole of it was up over the earth. If Christians can go into prayer, if we can observe Quarantino, the Lord will lift us up out of the earth, out of this pandemic, and we will survive. We can survive. Quarantino, Genesis chapter 7, verse 17. Yes. Are you with me? Am I talking to somebody? Our prayer of fast, our prayer of 40 days, our fasting of 40 days can change the world. God is powerful. And so Exodus chapter 34 verse 28 tells us that so he was there with the Lord, that is Moses, for 40 days and 40 nights, quarantino. And he did not eat anything nor drink anything. And that was when he wrote the tablets. He wrote the Ten Commandments. In your social isolation, in your social distancing, as you stay in your rooms and as you watch me, I can tell you that if you can put things into practice, you will come out with some commandment. Wisdom will come out of you. How are you spending your quarantino? How are you spending your time in isolation. Even if you are affected or infected, there is hope. You will come out, you will not die, you shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. Go with me again to Numbers chapter 13, verse 25. And the Bible says, And when they returned from spying out of the land, which took them 40 days. By now, if you are a frontliner, if you are a medical doctor, we are spying on the coronavirus. May you come out with an invention. May you come out with a vaccine, with a treatment. May your name always remain in our generation because God will bless our generation through you, all doctors, all nurses. If you go to, to Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 25, the Bible tells us again that so I fell down before the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights, which I told the Lord not to destroy you. That was from Moses. Destruction had happened. The people were dying like it's happening in our days. Moses went on his face 
for 40 days and 40 nights. And for you, my fellow reverends, my fellow priests, bishops, my seniors, my daddies, men of God, rise. We can seek the face of God in these trial times. In these moments when people are dying, Moses did it in Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 25. You can do the same. Men of God, arise. So, I'm talking to almost everyone. Go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 16 onwards. Something happened. Some people defied. Somebody was called Goliath. And he would come out morning and evening and bragging. He didn't care. And he died. David made him flat. And so for the common masses, for those who think, oh, the government is trying to, you know, you know, force us into isolation and this and that, so I'll go out anyway and I'll disobey. Be careful. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 16. Goliath will come out morning and evening bragging for 40 days. So in our time of quarantine, in our time of social distancing, follow rules. If the medical doctors say, wash your hands, stay at home, do so. Don't think that you are great or greater than or you are immune to sickness. Be careful, Goliath died. In Jonah chapter 3 verse 4, the Bible says, And Jonah began to go through the city and walking through, he said, 40 days and Nineveh will be destroyed. Do you want to be destroyed or you want to be saved? That is what I bring to you. For those who are recalcitrant, those who are just want to go around and do whatever they want to do, be careful. Be very careful. So I believe I'm talking to everybody. Quarantino, quarantine, isolation. Now, I move from this point to the next point. And so as we are in our 40-day period of prayer and fast, what do we do? And I'm going to move into some calculations and you understand. So allow me to digress a little into Genesis chapter 14, verse 20. And the Bible, you know, talks about how Melchizedek came out to meet Abraham. And Abraham gave him a tithe, one-tenth of all his possessions. How many days do we have in a year, dear friends? Just calculate. The scientists say it's 365 one quarter days, right? So if it is even 365, then it means one tenth is 35.5, right? And so the period of quarantino, 40, is just our tithe because if it is 36.5 days and we round it up to 40 days then you are also coming to meet your God with 40 days out of the 365 days as your tithe to the Lord. Genesis chapter 28 verse 20 to 22 talks about how after the vision of God's renewed God's covenant and Jacob initiates a covenant with God vowing that he will pay his tithe so I'm not talking about money here. I'm talking about the number of days that Christians, can we go on our, on our knees? Can we go into quarantino and pray and fast? It will be our thanksgiving unto the Lord and God himself. God himself will change our world. So our prayer and fast for 40 days is not for nothing. You are paying your tithe. Your tithe of 365 one quarter days. So you are paying 40 days out of it. If you want to pay your tithe out of money and you think you have done well, pay your tithe out of the days that God has given you. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30 to 32 tells us the specifications of the tithe as introduced by Moses. And who was it paid to? It was paid to the Levites, the priests. You can't pay your days to me. Now we have a new high priest, according to Hebrews. His name is Jesus. 
Why can't you pay your tithe of 365 one quarter days, 40 days approximately, to Jesus in prayer and fast? Numbers chapter 18, verse 20 to 32, tells us how it is dedicated to the Levites. I mean, the monies and the proceeds from farms, but days are given by God. Pay your tithe, pray and fast. Don't say, oh, me, I can't do it. Even if you can pray and fast with your tummy, with food, you can pray and fast with something else. Our new priest is called Jesus. Don't joke with your quarantino, especially for those in Orthodox churches and Muslims who pray number of days, either, either Trentino or Quarantino. Praying for 40 days is biblical. Fasting for 40 days is biblical. You are dedicating your whole year of tithe to the Lord. And in this case, Jesus or Muhammad, however it will appear. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 5 to verse 11, those instructions were given. And that was when things began changing in the time of the Israelites. Are you beginning to get me? So for those who are asking for the back end, why for 40 days and 40 nights I have to pray and fast, and you are asking for 30 days and this and that, you are only paying your tithe. And so while you are in isolation, especially when the governments are beginning to tell us by force you are supposed to go into social distancing, what do we do? And so I'm moving from quarantino, from history. I went through the Bible and now I'm now trying to put it in the context of our prayer of 40 days and 40 nights in our Lenten season. Then you understand. And so I'm coming your way again to conclude on my quarantino. Now, when you are in isolation, there's a possibility that you'll be hungry, you'll be lonely. You remember in Matthew chapter 2, the Bible says, and after the 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was hungry. You will be hungry. Socially, you'll be hungry. Emotionally, you'll be hungry. You'll be hungry for many things. And so in isolation, especially when governments, I'm not talking about one country, many nations and their governments are calling people to socially distance and to go into quarantine, to go into quarantine and quarantine. What do we do? Remember that COVID-19 is not anything new. But once you're isolated, human beings naturally are social beings. And so we want to interact and be free around. And so once we are not doing that, we feel threatened. Our very survival feels threatened. And so we, have, we begin to think too much, we begin to have high blood pressure, and our heart begins to raise, especially when you are alone staying or you are staying with only your wife and your family. You can't go out to visit friends. And so you begin to have high blood pressure. You begin to, your heart begins to raise. And because you are staying home alone, you may be eating and obesity will set in. And when all these are happening, your immune system will go down. And so when your immune system goes down, then you are in trouble. That is when you are afraid. You may catch the disease. When your immune system is down, you have anxiety, you have depression, you are down. And so any slightest thing, you wake up with slight... Now I'm talking to you as a clinical psychologist. You have little, little, um, you know, colds and flus in the morning. And so you become susceptible to any disease because you are isolated. And that is where you become down. And you can't even think right. Your cognition goes down, and for those who are elderly, unfortunately, Alzheimer's diseases will begin to set in, and before we are aware, death even comes in. That is what we are talking about. But we have a God. All we need to do is we have to understand, we have to understand and work on the panic, work on the isolation, and get something out of it. So when you are home, Remember, there are three levels of loneliness or social distancing that will hit you. We call something the social loneliness, which the social distancing will hit you. Situational loneliness is the first one. Developmental loneliness is the next one. And internal loneliness will be the third. When this happens, what happens is that situationally, because of the COVID-19, you 
are panicky, you are afraid, you are lonely, you are in your room, you don't know what is happening. And so you begin to feel down. And that is when it will begin to develop. The developmental loneliness will begin to come in. You get angry with your wife or your spouse. You get angry with your children. You easily get irritated. You can't sleep well. And everything begins to mix up. And when people around you begin to get bored with you, then you begin to feel the internal loneliness. And when that internal loneliness happens, then you begin to feel that things are not right. How do we then make it right? Please, if you're a Christian or you're a Muslim, or you may not be any of the above, I'm here to tell you that if you can obey instructions from your leaders to stay home, that will be the beginnings of the break from loneliness. Let me give you an example. If I have food in the kitchen and I want to place it in the fridge because nobody is about eating it, and daddy says, no, place it on the table. Then I decide to place it on the table and not in the fridge. If the next day the food is spoiled, who is to blame? I or my daddy? My daddy says, I shouldn't place it in the fridge. I should put it on the table. And so I am to blame. No, it is my daddy because I was obeying. But imagine if I put it in the fridge and it got spoiled anyway, then I will be told that I asked you to leave it on the table. You didn't listen. Then I take the blame. So just follow rules. They say wash your hands, do so. Use sanitizers, do so. Socially distance, do so. When you're able to do all these things, and even if something goes wrong, your conscience will be clear. So follow rules. What must we know then? There are a few things and tips that I'm going to give you. And I'll end what I have for you today. One, allow yourself to face the fear. COVID-19 is spreading so wide and is creating fear and panic. Face it, accept it, and be careful. Even as you obey and distance yourself, accept it. Sometimes even during the day, spend at least two or three minutes and accept that the fear is there so that you can digest it. And once something is digested, it comes out. Point number two, write some things down. Begin to be grateful to the Lord. There is a neurotransmitter in the brain which is responsible for our happiness and our joy and it can create buffers around us. It's called the endorphin. When you are happy and grateful, things happen. Remember, some people are dead. Even if you are infected, you are not dead. Be grateful. If you are not infected, some people are infected and some are dead, so you are not infected. Be grateful. Be grateful to the Lord. And once you are grateful, you know, the end of things will begin to secrete. They begin to look fresher, joyful, joyful, and you are always covered. Point number three. I want to assure you that remind yourself that anxiety is a storeroom for wisdom. By now, the scientists are battling all around. But can you not learn some wisdom from this? Have you not even learned anything about you know, hygiene, washing of your hands, and you are now reading a lot, you are now listening to news, something you, you normally wouldn't do? So in your isolation, you can get wisdom. How can you even get wisdom? You can go on YouTube, you can go so wherever you can in your room. Now the social, the whole world is at your doorstep. Learn something. Can you learn picture making? Can you learn photography online? Can you learn accounting? Can you, you know, put yourself and roll yourself on, on an online course? And now it is even cheaper. Many schools are, you know, cutting down on their, on their fees. You can take advantage of it. Before this COVID-19 is over, you have a degree. You have read a book. You have showed so much love. There is wisdom in isolation. Number three, exercise. If you are elderly, can you help your wife in the kitchen? Help with the laundry. If you are a wife, can you help daddy? Can you help the children? Do something. Exercise. You may not necessarily have to walk out and go jogging, but you can do something. If you can do some aerobics at home, Fair enough. Do something. 
Last but one, learn to smile, learn to laugh, be humorous. See the, 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 the lighter side of life. It will help you. Then finally, what I want you to know is begin to appreciate your courage. When you're obedient, it doesn't mean that you're a coward. It tells you that you have a master over yourself. You are able to listen and to do what you want to do. Give yourself a thumbs up. Encourage yourself that you are courageous even in this world. And this is all I brought to you in this long video. This is my first time making a long video. But I was here to let you know that Quarantino is historic. It has come before one third of Europe was swept, was, was swept off and people died. But we have learned from it. We will live. You will live. You and your family will live. You will not die. You shall live and recount his deeds. You, we may be punished, punished, but we will not be doomed to die. God bless you and save you. May his face shine upon you. May you begin to, to prosper even in this epidemic and in this endemic season. We will survive. And I tell you, after all this, one day, when this is over, it shall end in praise. You will live. You will live. You and your family, your friends will live. God bless you. Thank you for listening to me. And I'll see you again another time. Bye-bye.